What's up, Tooth Nation? My name is Jean Abreu, and I am the host of Toothcast. Today's episode, we're going to talk with Enrique Lima. He's a press communication office for Botafogo, and we're going to be talking about his career. We're going to be talking about his experiences. So to start off, Enrique, thank you very much for your time. It's great to have you here, and let's start. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So to start off, Enrique, uh, present yourself. Talk a little bit more about you. So I'm 22 years old. I am the press communication officer for the academy at Botafogo. I work with the, the academy since the 15 to the 17 and the 20. And I work with the professional as well during the matches. Um, I finished my college. I study journalism at Universidade Federal Fluminense, UF. And, and I'm very happy to be here today. Very nice, very nice. Any other any other clubs that you worked? Yes, uh, I started working with football with Serrano. is a is a regional team from Petrópolis, and there was the the first the first contact with uh, football that I had working. So I am very pleased to be uh, one of the first. Uh, be part of the communication of Serrano and, and helping with the, the communication. And now they are doing incredible. And, and I'm very happy to see what I did and what they are doing. Nice, nice. And talking about your experiences in football, continue in this, in this subject. A lot of people would love to be in your place. You know, you are working into a big club. And what advice do you give to some people that want to be in your place, want to go through expenses. We know that the experience of each person is different, but what advice would you give to someone that look at you and say, listen, I want to be there? Yeah, so first of all, you have to be very decided on what you want and go there, work very hard. You're not going to have a lot of days off. Uh, you're going to work every day, one, one day or the other, you're going to have a day off. But you're doing what you love. You're doing uh, what what do you you think is the the best thing for you. You're working with football. A lot of people want to to go and work with football. You have to take the opportunities and go there and work. Show your value. And and yeah, I think this is the the one advice that I, I can give is go there, work, uh, do your best, and the things will will happen. One thing that you said, and it's very true, is the days off. Mm -hmm. Normally, someone that works with football don't have this. And, and some people don't understand. People look from the outside, and they don't realize that football never stops. Holidays, you know, uh, big holidays like Christmas, New Year's, and, and it doesn't stop. So to do something like this, you, you got to really love it. You got to go for it because it's very tiring. And it's an experience that I had when I was also at Botafogo with Honda and Kalu. So like you said, you gotta love what you do and you gotta go for it and you gotta go and do the best that you can so things will happen. That's great, yeah, yeah. that's great. So, uh, and, and going over over this, Enrique, how hard for you is this kind of situation? Because like I said, some people don't understand and people around you, they gotta understand that on the weekends, normally you're gonna be working and how hard is for you to to manage these kind of situations. Yeah, so the first moment is very hard, but they understood very well. Uh, this is this is my dream. Um, when I was starting working with football, um, I wasn't getting paid, but I was loving what I what I was doing. And now that that I'm working with football since Serrano, now at Botafogo, uh, this is my passion. Uh, I want to do this. For, for my career and they have to understand it is is what it is what it is you, you are not gonna change it uh, but you have to compensate it on uh, in different ways uh, when you have a day off you do a little bit different you you go out you have dinner uh, you have to to be compensated so it, it will be a, a good relationship yes for sure for sure probably enjoy a little bit more the, the opportunity of having a day off. Yes. So 
you work at Botafogo, but you also work into the stadium. So how 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 is this experience with the shows that are happening in Newton Santos? A lot of shows happening this year. So how is this uh, experience for you this year? It's kind of crazy that we have uh, a lot of shows this year. But it's very interesting. Uh, I didn't work uh, with anything like that. I always work with sports, and it it was very cool to to be part of this the experience and what we we are doing is very different from what we have now uh we have these shows now we're gonna have taylor swift here at Newton santos and we normally do a kind of a vlog to to the to the media so we post the the people getting to the station the the people uh enjoying the the stadium so to, to to make the people feel that they are on the show even though they aren't so if you are watching uh the show on on youtube or any broadcast uh and you have your phone you're gonna uh see what the people there are feeling so we have photographers we have uh people filming from from the crowd, from from an upper vision, so it's very cool. Uh, it's very unique, and, and it's very interesting. It's getting out of the the football and and work with the the shows with the music. And from from uh, all of the shows that you watched, which one do you prefer? So uh, I have two shows that uh, I can talk about. First, it was the weekend. It was very, very nice experience uh, for me. Uh, I liked the, the music, uh, so it was very good. And the other was Coldplay. It was insane. The lights, the the effects, uh, it was very, very nice. It was incredible, something that I have never experienced. So these two shows are the the, the ones that I, I, I want to give uh, this this is space here to talk and it's very interesting because normally you, you don't have a lot of shows on this uh this big here at uh, rio uh maracana used to have it but nowadays they don't and now newton santos are hosting this experience and it's very nice yes cold play i was there it was great man i can i can assure this it was a great experience very nice Okay, Enrique, so you work at Botafogo, but I know that you are a big fan of Bundesliga. You know, where, where does this, this, uh, this crazy feeling for Bundesliga came from? Yeah, so it came in 2013. Uh, I was watching the Bundesliga and I, I saw Bastian Schweinsteiger playing and it was incredible seeing what he was doing. So I got this passion from from here, from 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 him, and I started watching and cheering for Bayern and also for Germany. So even uh, the the World Cup, I was cheering for for Germany. Nobody was understanding, uh, but yeah, it was a, a crazy moment. And after that, I I get more into it. Uh, I went to. To, to Germany once and and have the opportunity to visit the Allianz Arena and it was very incredible seeing the, the stadium it's, it's very nice very big uh, they have a lot of uh, morals on the, the walls they are painted with uh, the, the players the the legends that we can talk so it's very nice the atmosphere there and since that I, I enjoy every match now it's more hard that uh, Bayern is not that dominant so it's a strange it's a, it's a strange thing because when I first started watching by a goalie like after goals and uh, it was like four zero five zero seven eight and now it's more 
uh, it's more difficult. We have these the teams that play at Bundesliga getting more investments, getting more structure, so it's more competitive league. So yeah, the this evolution of the league is very good. And you talk about Bayern not not so dominant this year, but we can check the last years Bayern being very dominant. Yeah. How do you explain this? Because this is is not something that is common in a, a club that is uh, killing it every year. How do you explain this in your opinion? Why Bayern is so dominant in German leagues? So um, Bayern since uh, the Second World War, they they faced very difficult problems, uh, and after that they were. Uh, down and, and have to restructure uh, and after that they, they were building a structure very good so have the, the right investments uh, knowing what to do with the, the money uh, invest on players uh, build up a good facility for for the, the academies pro for the professional so these investments uh, are the 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 one thing that in my mind is the the one that makes this uh, success of Bayern. So it's, it's hard you see Bayern bringing a star. We had like Harry Kane, but others it's, it's very hard. Bayern normally have uh, a good window. Uh, they buy some players that they need. Uh, they they sell others, but they don't. Uh, normally, they don't make a lot of uh, investments on one player. So this is the one thing that we can talk. And the other is uh, we have a CEO. So it's different from the the teams from the other places. Uh, like here in Brazil, we are having the staffs. But there's kind of a little bit difference. So this structure is very important for, for the football. They, they would not have... Uh, things going on under uh, on, under the eye. They are all everything they they do. They they are very transparent. So it's very good to see this this part of football, uh, knowing that is very uh, seriously. And and we all know that you love Bundesliga, but which league is is better, Bundesliga or Premier League? Yeah, so we can we can have these two leagues uh, compare. Uh, in my opinion, Bundesliga is a very good league. They are getting more attention nowadays. But Premier League is the one that every player wants to to go there to play there. They have the the best teams of the world. So it's a totally different league from the other parts of the world. So um, my opinion is Premier League is the the first one. And then Bundesliga second and third. Uh, we can talk about La Liga. Uh, nowadays more more difficult because uh, Real Madrid and Barca are not that dominant. Uh, they don't have like Cristiano Ronaldo. They don't have Messi. They don't have Neymar. Uh, the players they are um, getting new players. The young players, so they are on this this step and. And yeah, maybe a second nowadays, maybe it's Bundesliga second and La Liga third. But my top three is Premier League, uh, Bundesliga and La Liga nowadays. Okay, I agree. I agree with you. And going back to your job now, going back to Botafogo, how important is to experience as much as you can when you have the opportunity to work for a club like that? Oh, it's insane, bro. You have to, to take every opportunity, talk with the professionals, the ones that are already there uh, for long years. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to talk to the photographer, to, to the press communication officer, uh, to the press officer, to, to the designers, go there, see, talk a little bit, uh, get to know a little bit more of their job, what they do, uh, the her uh, their mind of football, what they think, and, and it's very important to have this 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 environment that you can talk 
with uh, every person. So it's very important for 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 a young boy to to go there to talk to get the advices. Because alone you're nothing. You have to be uh, working with people, get the devices, and and be together so you can improve every day more. I remember you told me a story about you and Vitão. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so Vito is our photographer. Uh, he's the national team photographer as well. Um, he's insane. Uh, his, his job is outstanding. And one day I was going to take photos at Estadio Luso Brasileiro for the academy. And I knew that there is very difficult because they have one part of the pitch that has more lights than the others. So one's darker. So I go there and talk with him. Can you help me? Can you give me some devices? And he, of course, he uh, and give some devices and tips. And after that, he told me, bro, um, I'm here at Botafogo uh, for almost 10 years and nobody asked me what you asked already. So uh, it, it's very good to, to know that um, y you are uh, doing the, the right thing because of course, I take some pictures, but Vitão is an outstanding um, professional. So if I have the opportunity, you, you go there, you talk, um, be very respectful, uh, and uh, they, they, they like the, these professionals. Uh, when they are noticed that you want to, to know a little bit more, to improve, they are very pleasant to help you. And how important is to invest in the communications of a football club? So nowadays with the social medias and, and the broadcasts getting more into it, the daily, it's very important. Uh, your players need to understand they are part of uh, the club and they need to talk. They need to be on the Instagram, Twitter and give interviews. So you are exposing your brand. Football is about uh, marketing and communication. If you have a good team on pitch and you don't do a, a good job on the social media or marketing, it's gonna be a, a, a good uh, uh, maybe 16 players that play during the, the match. So, no, no, nobody will talk, but when you have a good marketing, a good communication, uh, it's gonna go around the the world. Um, if you make some some good jokes, or if you you work very seriously, but like posting the goals, uh, enjoying with the fans, getting more into it, it's gonna be much much better. Um, this kind of job is harder but the result is incredible. I agree 100% with you, 100%, man. Okay, so why learning English is so important for you in your career? Yeah, learning English was the first thing that uh, I did when I was a kid and wanted to, to work with football. So everybody knows that English is the number one language of the world, so football is not different you're gonna work at europe you're gonna talk english you're gonna work on us you're gonna talk english so the the big leagues they talk english uh mls as well they talk english so learning english is one thing to to become worldwide you you, you go there and you talk english um your 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 performance will be better. You're gonna have more opportunities. You you can work on any club. You can work on any place. So it's very important you have uh, this in mind that learning English and talk. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to to be putting effort and and trying to learn every day a little bit more and. It's very important for me. It's very important for for the young players as well. 
uh, when I have the opportunity, I talk with them. Say, bro, you have to to be speaking English. You you have to to be there and trying to improve your English. So they 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 normally they understand this and go there and have some classes. So it's very important to to give these advices to the young ones and and also for for the professionals. Yeah, I think this this increase a little bit with the SAFs coming to Brazil and then becoming more professional, the clubs, the necessity of the English and more professionals are looking and also opportunities to go outside. For the players, I believe that is 100% necessary. It's very important for them. And it's a process that it has to go. And like you say, we have to focus on the young ones. So the new generation, the next generation comes in and see this as a as a something important not only the English, but studying also, you know, for the uh, after, after career, the during career, we know that the career of a football player is very short. So it's important to think what you're going to do next in studying and learning other language, other languages is very important. Okay, Ike, fun fact, man. Tell me more. Tell me uh, some experience that you had that is unexpected in football. Uh, Something that is funny, something that is different. So uh, normally at the academy, you don't have uh, a lot of uh, procedments, and and it's more like easy going. So normally they, they don't pay attention on everything, and like it's normal you see dogs on the pitch, uh, seeing cats there. So, of course, you had uh, noticed that on the Sulamericana, uh, we have some 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 dogs, some some catches on the pitch. But at the academy, it happens as well. And let me think if some unique experience. And when this happened, for example, you stop the game and then go yeah. with the dog or the yeah. cat outside of the pitch. Yeah, normally a play a player tries and the dog dribbles him and <laughs> it gets one person for the security and, and catch. So at Tefati we have uh, some dogs. We have two uh, that we we give water, we give food, but they, they are there. And one's very is very polite, and the other uh, is more. Uh, how can I say? They, they want some some adventures. He wants to play a little bit, and sometimes uh, he's on the pitch. But nowadays, it it didn't. It's not happening anymore because we we got uh, him locked, not locked on on a a a, a, a cage, but he's there on their space. Uh, so we can have the match and and do what the players have to do and winning the matches. Nice, nice, man. Enrique, thank you very much for your time. It was great talking to you, man. I wish you all the best in your future career. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. Uh, it's an opportunity to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you.